Access your free language gifts right now, before they expire. First, the Shopping at a Mall Conversation PDF Cheat Sheet. You'll learn all the must-know words and phrases for shopping and getting around the mall with this new cheat sheet. Download it for free right now. Second, the top 15 phrases for exchanges, refunds, and complaints. This one-minute lesson will teach you phrases like, I got the wrong size, can I get a refund, and much more. Third, how about online shopping phrases? With this quick lesson, you'll learn how to say, sign up, log in, add to cart, and much more in your target language. Access it right now. Fourth, want to know how to improve your speaking skills? This one minute lesson reveals all the top learning strategies that will get you speaking with confidence. Fifth, the Mother's Day and Father's Day writing worksheet. This bonus printable PDF worksheet teaches you the must-know vocabulary for Mother's Day and Father's Day. And you can even practice writing the words out. And sixth, free language learning audiobooks for anyone who's watched this far. If you visit the link below, we'll send you over to our library of language learning audiobooks, which you can get for free. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Want to speak real Vietnamese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at VietnamesePod101.com. I don't know if it's seafood or like lake food or of seafood of of sell shattered. Hi guys, it's Ling. Welcome back to another video of VietnamesePod101.com, the fattest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Vietnamese. Uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about the top 10 fast foods in Vietnam and it's surprisingly different to other countries because pizza, hamburger, or chicken are not very popular in Vietnam. Vietnamese people serve food very quickly so that's why anything you eat can be considered as fast food. Today I'm going to introduce you the top 10 fast foods that can be uh, a main dish but it can be served very fast so that you will see something similar to the fast food that we used to. Let's get started. First one, let's talk about one of the very popular fast foods in the world which is Pizza, 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 pizza. In Vietnam, the way we eat pizza takes a lot of time. Basically, it's more expensive than local food. That's why every time we go for pizza, it'll take some time and we will go for pizza in special occasions or when we have something to celebrate. So it is fast food in other countries, but in Vietnam, we spend a lot of time in pizza restaurants. So if you want to speak in a Vietnamese accent, pizza, Pizza and uh, we have a lot of different kinds of pizza such as uh, pizza hải sản, pizza thập cẩm, pizza bò, pizza gà. The next common fast food that you know is probably uh, gà rán. Gà rán, gà rán, gà rán. Okay, fried chicken. And one of the most famous brands of gà rán in Vietnam is KFC. So in Vietnam we say KFC. KFC. Also we have Lotteria, um, Jollibee. But Vietnamese gà rán is also very delicious. Uh, you can find uh, gà rán or gà nướng at some local foods. And um, the flavor might not be similar but the taste is really good. So the second one is gà rán. The third one we have hamburger. Hamburger, hamburger, which is burger. It is your fast food, but it's not our fast food. But I still want to introduce to you. So um, when we go for burgers, normally if you want to eat real burgers in Vietnam, uh, we'll have to go to some Western restaurants, right? Um, which is very expensive. So we don't eat burgers as fast food. We eat burger for special events. Now let's move on to the next part, which is real Vietnamese fast food, uh, which means you can eat it very quickly. You can find it very quickly and they will serve you very quickly also. So the first one is pho. Pho. 
the dish that is made of noodles and uh, broth so basically aside from pho we have a lot of different kinds of noodles such as bún or mín or um, other things but let's talk about pho specifically so we have pho sao pho sao which is fried pho um, pho nước pho nước pho nước okay pho nước we have pho bò and pho gà pho sao we also have pho sao bò pho sao bò we don't have pho sao gà okay it's not something that we eat so we have pho sao bò only also we have pho chiên pho chiên Phở chiên will be like bigger and more floppy So phở chiên and we eat it with bò as well Phở chiên Also we have phở cuốn Phở cuốn Phở cuốn Phở cuốn Okay, so it's like a rice cake and we roll it with vegetables and beef Phở cuốn So those are the most common kinds of phở Next one, let's talk about something similar to phở which is bún Bún is also a kind of noodle but it's not as flat as pho. Bún is also from rice and um, we have different kinds of bún which are very very popular in Vietnam. For example, bún chả. Bún chả. Bún chả. Next one, we have bún ngan. Bún ngan. Bún ngan. Bún chả is from pork and bún ngan is like duck noodle. Uh, bún đậu mắm tôm. Bún đậu mắm tôm. Bún đậu mắm tôm, we eat it with uh, string paste and uh, tofu We also have bún cá Bún cá Bún cá uh, Fish uh, noodle And uh, bún thang Bún thang Bún thang The broth is uh, from shrimp, shrimp broth So those are very popular and common in Vietnam about bún So bún is a kind of fast food Next one we have cơm tấm Cơm tấm Cơm tấm Cơm tấm is from the south This is very popular in Saigon Cơm tấm Broken rice And we have cơm tấm with sườn bì chả Sườn bì chả Cơm tấm Sườn is like pork ribs But it's just like the meat part Bì chả Bì chả is like a kind of chả in uh, the south So cơm tấm sườn bì chả And everything is like less than $2 So easy to find and it's very easy to eat as well Next one, another kind of fast food in Vietnam which is bánh mì Bánh mì Bánh mì Bánh mì is also very popular it's one of the Vietnamese street foods but it's also very fast to eat because uh, it will take you only 5 minutes to get it and probably 10 minutes to eat and it's very good for breakfast, for lunch or even dinner Bánh mì is very popular for students because they don't have a lot of money, right? They want to save money Bánh mì, we have bánh mì sốt vang Bánh mì sốt vang Bánh mì bát tê Bánh mì bát tê What else? Bánh mì trứng Bánh mì trứng Or bánh mì thập cẩm Bánh mì thập cẩm So bánh mì is considered as one of the fast foods But it's very good for a main dish Next one, another kind of Vietnamese fast food Which is miến 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 Which is glass noodle We also have different kinds of miến Which are uh, miến ngan Miến ngan So if you go to a bún ngan shop and if you don't want to eat bún, you can eat miến instead Miến ngan Next one we have miến lươn, very very popular Miến lươn Miến lươn Miến lươn Also we have miến trộn Miến trộn Miến trộn Miến trộn The next one which is also very fast to eat and to serve Soy 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 is a little bit heavier than noodles but it's really good for you throughout the day if you have to work hard and you don't have a lot of time to go out or to have some snacks during the day In Vietnam, soy is very popular because the rise of Vietnam to cook soy the 
uh, sticky rice is very very nice it's very uh, soft and it smells really good I have tried different kinds of sticky rice in other countries but Vietnam is still one of the best countries that provides uh, sticky rice so we have soy thập cẩm soy thập cẩm like all kinds of toppings uh, soy ngô soy ngô and soy xéo soy ngô, soy xéo, my favorite breakfast soy... what else? what else? what else? soy... soy pate soy pate or soy thịt soy thịt the last one so fast but this is like a dish for winter which is chow chow porridge chow, okay? Chow is also common in Vietnam and um, if you don't want something too heavy or if you just want some snack throughout the day then you can eat chow sườn chow sườn chow sườn or we have chow chai chow chai also we have chow đậu xanh chow đậu xanh chow đậu xanh rice and green beans yeah, those are everything that you can find in Vietnam, not only on the streets, but also in restaurants. And uh, it is considered as Vietnamese fast food because it is uh, served quickly and you can also finish it quickly. And that's it for today. I know this is very different to um, other countries' fast food, such as pizza, fried chicken or burgers. But that is one of the typical things about Vietnamese culture. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to like this video subscribe the channel and visit the website vietnamesepot101.com to get access to your free lifetime account right now and get your real lessons by real teachers see you in the next one xin chào và hẹn gặp lại các bạn want to speed up your language learning take your very first lesson with us you'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations sign up for your free lifetime account just click the link in the description Want to speak real Vietnamese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at VietnamesePod101.com Hi guys, it's Ling. Welcome back to VietnamesePod101.com The fattest, easiest and most fun way to learn Vietnamese. We've had videos about 10 companies in Vietnam or 10 universities in Vietnam and today I'm going to introduce you the top 5 businessmen in Vietnam. The reason why that I want to introduce to you is because they are very famous and uh, they contribute a lot uh, to the development of Vietnam. So let's see who they are. Number one, we must talk about Phạm Nhật Vượng. Phạm Nhật Vượng, the founder and chairman of the Giant Bean Group. Phạm Nhật Vượng is Vietnam's first and richest billionaire. Forbes named him as Vietnam's first billionaire with a net worth of $1.5 billion. His current net worth, according to Forbes, is a whooping of $4.2 billion US dollars. Uh, this year, Vingroup's intention is to sell phones in Europe and cars in the US. Uh, it can be said that Mr. Phạm Nhật Vượng has been bringing Vietnam to all five continents and creating great pride for all Vietnamese people. Also, it can be seen that Mr. Phạm Nhật Vượng is one of the most successful businessmen in Vietnam at the moment. Entering 2020, Mr. Phạm Nhật Vượng has taken Vingroup out of the traditional retail industry step by step. He also advocates uh, investing in high-tech agriculture or high-tech industry and high-class tourism, promising to gradually improve the living standards of Vietnamese people and the image of Vietnam in the international market. VinFast electric uh, motorbikes or VinFast cars or VinFast phones are having a solid foothold in the domestic market and are highly appreciated by foreign technology enthusiasts. Uh, that is one of the most profound proofs of what Mr. Phạm Nhật Vượng and Bing Group are doing. Now the second one, let's talk about Mr. Đặng Lê Nguyên Vũ. Have you heard about Trung Nguyên Coffee Vietnam? Uh, so Mr. Đặng Lê Nguyên Vũ is the founder of Trung Nguyên Vietnam. And in his 20-year career, despite many difficulties in the fields of retail, uh, tourism and real estate, with his belief and strong will, 
Mr. Đặng Lê Nguyên Vũ uh, always wishes to globalize Trung Nguyên and uh, contribute to the national strategy for a stronger Vietnam. Uh, just recently, Mr. Đặng Lê Nguyên Vũ has received the most attention from the public with the event of the cancellation of the legal representation right at Trung Nguyên Coffee uh, instead of Mrs. Lê Hoàng Diệp Thảo. Uh, who is his wife. This event caused uh, skepticism for the next development path of this world-famous brand. Uh, after the historic and costly divorce, Mr. Dang Lingwin Vu regained control of the company and gradually brought Chung Nguyen back to its position again as the king of the Vietnamese coffee industry. Uh, so currently, uh, after many ups and downs, Chung Nguyen is not only a company selling packaged coffee, but also uh, has an ecosystem of many cafes occupying expansive positions in many uh, areas in Vietnam. It can be said that Mr. Dang Lê Nguyen Vũ is one of the businessmen with a different way of thinking, but is very respected by young people among Vietnamese uh, businessmen today. Next one, let's talk about Ms. Mai Kiều Liên. Uh, Ms. Michael Lin was born in 1953 in Paris, uh, graduated as an engineer in diary processing technology in Russia in 1976 uh, with the desire to create something for the young generation, the future generation of Vietnam. She embarked on market research and found that milk is a very good source of nutrients for babies' development. Uh, since then, she has worked hard and uh, devotedly to bring Vina Milk from nothing to become one of the most successful companies in Vietnam today. So now you know she is the owner and founder of Vina Milk. Vina Milk's uh, solid position today is largely due to the contribution of Ms. Michael Lian. She is the one who makes timely decisions such as investing in raw material areas early, restructuring the company and setting the goal of bringing Vina Milk into the top 50 largest dairy producers in the world in the next five years with $3 billion in revenue. Uh, on this point, uh, Forbes also commented that Miss Lin has built Vinamilk not only to become one of the prestigious brands of Vietnam, but also to be respected and appreciated uh, throughout Asia and the world. In an interview with uh, BBC, Miss Lin expressed her ambition that Vinamilk will become a multinational corporation and will have large farms to be self-sufficient in raw materials from domestic counts reducing the import of foreign materials. It can be said that at present, Vinamil is a leading giant in milk, not only in Vietnam but also in Asia. Next one, let's talk about Ms. Nguyễn Thị Phương Thảo. Have you heard about Vietjet? Uh, Ms. Nguyễn Thị Phương Thảo was born in 1970, is currently the general director of Vietjet one of the biggest Vietnam Airlines. With her young age, she soon succeeded in her work, owning a huge amount of property that many people dream of. Not only that, she's also one of the 10 most successful businesswomen by Forbes Vietnam. In 2020, Ms. Nguyễn Thị Hương Thảo is included in the 100 Asian Economic Changers. This businesswoman with a small stature constantly appears in the nominations for businesses and development development in the region voted by major newspaper in the world. She has become one of the model businesswomen of young people and up to now, Vietjet has captured more than 40% of the domestic market share and continuously growing rapidly in profits. Many people who have come in contact with her say that Miss Tao is not a mere business model but more like a a warrior woman. Her staff also said that the general manager's office is lighted until 2 or 3 a.m. every day, including holidays, which is very normal. And those who have come into contact with her uh, have a very special impression of this woman. This explains why she is very successful, right? Now, let's talk about Mr. Jonathan Hạnh Nguyễn. Reviving Changbin Commercial Center, which is Changbin Plaza, 
turning it into the most luxurious shopping place in Vietnam in the context of the economic crisis in 2020 is considered a very, very risky decision of Mr. Jonathan Hạnh Nguyễn. However, the chairman and general director of IMAX Pan Pacific Group, IPP, who is called the king of Vietnamese brands, shared, I'm not playing foolish, uh, reckless or indecisive. He once said that this is not simply a commercial center, but also the lifelong aspiration of an expatriated son. Uh, only his statement shows uh, how patriotic he is, right? And especially among 112 super luxury stalls at Chang Tien Plaza, uh, Mr. Jonathan Hạnh Nguyễn owns uh, 20 booths already, rumored to own a fortune worth hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars, with the image of a super luxury mansion in Vietnam. But the IPP chairman Jonathan Hạnh Nguyễn has never announced his fortune. The official statistics on the assets of Jonathan Hạnh Nguyễn have also never appeared. However, in the Vietnamese business world, he is an illustrious name both in terms of assets and business scale. In 2020, uh, he is one of the leaders with large investments in industrial parks, export processing zones, and most especially, the reoperation of Van Phong Lodge Seaport to help promote the domestic export industry. Uh, this is a project of the National General Port, the largest international transshipments in Vietnam. That's it for today, a lot of information, right? But I really want to introduce to you the biggest uh, business woman or businessman in Vietnam who have helped Vietnam to become a better country, a bigger and stronger country. And uh, they have contributed a lot into the development of our country. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps. And uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, visit the website VietnamesePod101.com to get access to your free lifetime account right now and get your real lessons by real teachers. I'll see you in the next video and xin chào và hẹn gặp lại các bạn. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Want to speak real Vietnamese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at VietnamesePod101.com. Hi guys, it's Lee. Welcome back to VietnamesePod101.com, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Vietnamese. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about the history of Vietnam, but not everything in the history. I'm going to introduce you the top five historical figures in Vietnam. Why they are so important to Vietnamese history, why they are so meaningful to Vietnamese people, and what they did in the past. So keep watching and we'll also learn something from here. Hùng Vương Hùng Vương là tên gọi các vị vua nước Văn Lang của dân tộc Đại Việt. Theo truyền thuyết, Hùng Vương đầu tiên là con trai Lạc Long Quân, lên ngôi vào năm 2879 trước công nguyên, đặt quốc hiệu là Văn Lang và chia thành 15 bộ cho đến khi thục phán An Dương Vương chiếm nước vào năm 258 trước công nguyên. Sự tích Hùng Vương được ghi chép lần đầu tiên vào cuối thời Trần tại Hồng Bàng Thị trong sách Lĩnh Nam Trích Quái. Sau này, sử gia Ngô Sĩ Liên đưa vào Đại Việt Sử Ký Toàn Thư cuối thế kỷ 15. Theo các nghiên cứu khảo cổ học hiện đại cũng như đối chiếu với các sử liệu từ Trung Quốc cho thấy nước Văn Lang thực sự tồn tại. Nhưng nhà nước này chỉ xuất hiện vào khoảng đầu thế kỷ thứ bảy trước công nguyên, muộn hơn rất nhiều so với mô tả của truyền thuyết. Dỗ tổ Hùng Vương hay lễ hội Đền Hùng là một ngày lễ của Việt Nam. Đây là lễ hội truyền thống của người Việt Nam nhằm tưởng nhớ công lao dựng nước của các vua Hùng. Lễ hội truyền thống được tổ chức hàng năm vào ngày 10 tháng 3 âm lịch tại Đền Hùng, thành phố Việt Trì, tỉnh Phú Thọ. Lý Thái Tổ Năm 1009, khi Lê Long Đĩnh, vị vua cuối cùng của nhà Lê Băng Hà, Lý Công Ẩn lên ngôi hoàng đế, hay còn gọi là vua Lý Thái Tổ. Trong thời gian trị vì của mình, vua Lý Thái Tổ đã dành nhiều thời gian để dẹp loạn và củng cố triều đình trung ương. Vua Lý Thái Tổ cũng rất chú trọng đến việc điều chỉnh luật lệ trong nước. Các phép cũ thời tiền Lê được làm mới. Thời Lý Thái Tổ, nhiều ngôi chùa được xây dựng vì ông vốn là người theo đạo Phật. 
Năm 1010, sau khi rời đô ra Thăng Long, việc đầu tiên Lý Công Uẩn làm là cung cấp 20 vạn quan để xây chùa ở Điện Thiên Đức, kinh đô của nhà Tiền Lê ở Hoa Lư, Ninh Bình. Tuy nhiên, Lý Thái Tổ cảm thấy vùng đất này chật hẹp, không thể mở rộng để làm kinh đô. Vì vậy, sau khi tiêu diệt xong các lực lượng nổi dậy, Lý Thái Tổ đã quyết định rời đô từ Hoa Lư về thành Đại La vào tháng 7 năm 1010. Thành Đại La được đổi tên thành Thăng Long. Đây cũng là dấu mốc mở đầu cho sự phát triển bền vững kéo dài 216 năm của triều Đại Lý. Quang Trung Nguyễn Huệ Nguyễn Huệ sinh năm 1753, cha là Hồ Phi Phúc, quê quán tại Quỳnh Đôi, huyện Quỳnh Lam, tỉnh Nghệ An. Mùa xuân năm 1771, anh em nhà Tây Sơn bao gồm Nguyễn Nhạc, Nguyễn Huệ, Nguyễn Lữ dựng cờ khởi nghĩa tại ấp Tây Sơn, tỉnh Bình Định. Từ năm 1771 đến 1788, nghĩa quân Tây Sơn đã lật đổ được hai tập đoàn phong kiến bảo thủ phản động là Chú Nguyễn ở Đàng Trong và Vua Lê, Chú Trịnh ở Đàng Ngoài. Tháng 12 năm 1788, Nguyễn Huệ lên ngôi Hoàng đế lấy niên hiệu là Quang Trung. Ông đưa ra những chính sách tiến bộ để củng cố và xây dựng đất nước sau một thời gian khủng hoảng và chia cắt kéo dài. Nguyễn Huệ, Quang Trung là lãnh tụ kiệt xuất của phong trào nông dân Tây Sơn, nhà chính trị, một thiên tài quân sự, một anh hùng của dân tộc. Võ Nguyên Giáp Võ Nguyên Giáp sinh ngày 25 tháng 8 năm 1911 và từ trần ngày 4 tháng 10 năm 2013. Ông là nhà lãnh đạo quân sự chính trị gia Việt Nam. Trước đó, ông không được đào tạo ở bất kỳ trường quân sự nào, không phải trải qua các cấp bậc quân hàm trong quân đội. Ông trở thành đại tướng đầu tiên của quân đội nhân dân Việt Nam ở tuổi 37. Tổng tư lệnh tối cao của quân đội, một trong những người sáng lập nước Việt Nam Dân Chủ Cộng Hòa. Đại tướng Võ Nguyên Giáp là một trong những học trò xuất sắc nhất và là người bạn thân thiết của Chủ tịch Hồ Chí Minh. Đại tướng Võ Nguyên Giáp là tấm gương về lòng trung thành vô bờ bến với đảng, lòng yêu tổ quốc, yêu đồng bào và tinh thần cách mạng triệt để. Ông đã dành chọn cuộc đời mình vì nước, vì dân và đó là đạo đức cao cả nhất của người cách mạng. Võ Nguyên Giáp là người đầu tiên được tặng thưởng huân chương Hồ Chí Minh và cho đến nay là người duy nhất được tặng thưởng huân chương này hai lần vào năm 1950 và 1979. Hồ Chí Minh Chủ tịch Hồ Chí Minh lúc nhỏ tên là Nguyễn Sinh Cung, lúc đi học tên là Nguyễn Tất Thành. Trong nhiều năm hoạt động cách mạng, ông lấy tên là Nguyễn Ái Quốc và nhiều bí danh khác. Hồ Chí Minh sinh ngày 19 tháng 5 năm 1890 và mất ngày mùng 2 tháng 9 năm 1969. Hồ Chí Minh sinh ra trong một gia đình nhà nho yêu nước, lớn lên ở địa phương có truyền thống anh hùng chống giặc ngoại xâm, sống trong hoàn cảnh đất nước chìm trong ách đô hộ của thực dân Pháp. Thời thơ ấu và thời niên thiếu, Hồ Chí Minh đã chứng kiến những đau thương của đồng bào và các cuộc đấu tranh chống thực dân. Người đã sớm có ý chí đánh đuổi thực dân, giành độc lập cho đất nước Việt Nam và đem lại tự do, hạnh phúc cho đồng bào. Với ý chí và quyết tâm đó, tháng 6 năm 1911, Hồ Chí Minh rời Tổ quốc lên đường sang phương Tây tìm đường giải phóng đất nước. Bác là người thầy vĩ đại của cách mạng Việt Nam, lãnh tụ kính yêu của giai cấp công nhân và của cả dân tộc Việt Nam. That's it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and giving me this topic because I'd love to share to you guys our cultures and uh, our history. Uh, also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe the channel and visit the website VietnamesePod101.com to get access to your free lifetime account right now and get your real lessons by real teachers. Uh, thank you so much again. See you in the next one. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại các bạn. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Want to speak real Vietnamese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at VietnamesePod101.com. Hi there, it's Ling. Welcome back to VietnamesePod101.com, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Vietnamese. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about the top 10 websites that are commonly used in Vietnam.
So it can be a social media or newspaper or um, a search engine, but all of them are used a lot by Vietnamese people. Some of them are even made in Vietnam. The first one, let's talk about the number one search engine, which is Google. Basically, Google is used the most in Vietnam and is super, super popular. It's the homepage of like almost every computer and laptop. Uh, even I use Google every day. The first thing that we think about when we want to know something or when we want to look for something, we think of Google. And I have to say that it helps me a lot, not only when searching something, but also it helps me when learning new things as well. We have google.com.vn, which is the Vietnamese version of Google. In Vietnamese, we can say Google là nền tảng tìm kiếm nổi tiếng nhất Việt Nam. Google là nền tảng tìm kiếm nổi tiếng nhất Việt Nam. Google là nền tảng tìm kiếm nổi tiếng nhất Việt Nam. So aside from nền tảng tìm kiếm, a uh, searching or search platform, you can also use a uh, công cụ tìm kiếm. Công cụ tìm kiếm. Công cụ tìm kiếm is like a search tool or search engine, okay? Uh, Google là nền tảng tìm kiếm nổi tiếng nhất Việt Nam. Next one, let's talk about social media. The most common social media is Facebook and uh, I think is super popular everywhere. Basically, Vietnamese people surf uh, Facebook every day, every single hour. If we don't have anything to do and we just want to kill time, the first thing that we think about is uh, surfing Facebook. Also, when it comes to public holidays or special events, uh, it's very how to say it's so much fun on Facebook because everybody shares their pictures or videos about uh, the holidays. So in Vietnamese, uh, we can say Facebook là mạng xã hội nổi tiếng nhất Việt Nam. Facebook là mạng xã hội nổi tiếng nhất Việt Nam. Facebook là mạng xã hội nổi tiếng nhất Việt Nam. Another one which is also very popular in Vietnam is YouTube and uh, Vietnamese people use it a lot. We have a lot of huge channels such as um, singing channels, uh, cooking channels, fitness and yoga channels as well. I have to say that Vietnamese people are pretty quick and uh, sensitive with international trends. So when it comes to new trends or something on social media, we can adapt very well. And we also create channels and trends uh, in order to approach the world. One of the very popular YouTube channels that I love is Ẩm Thực Mẹ Làm, which is a cooking channel. And uh, this is a channel of a son who wants to keep memories about his mother and uh, he shoots videos uh, his mother cooking different dishes, Vietnamese dishes. It feels very peaceful and I think you can also take a look at it. For example, in Vietnamese, you can say Ẩm thực mẹ làm là một kênh YouTube rất nổi tiếng và được yêu thích ở Việt Nam. Ẩm thực mẹ làm là một kênh YouTube rất nổi tiếng và được yêu thích ở Việt Nam. Ẩm thực mẹ làm là một kênh YouTube rất nổi tiếng và được yêu thích ở Việt Nam. Next one, let's talk about newspapers. The two most popular official news websites in Vietnam are VN Express and Dân Chí. These two websites are super popular in terms of news, official news. So if you want to confirm something, whether it's official or not, or it's just a scandal, uh, you can go here and check. Uh, and also if you want to have the latest updates from the government or from the social media or something, we can also check it here. I'm not sure if they have English version, but uh, let me check. So let's make an example in Vietnamese. Uh, VN Express và Dân Chí là hai nền tảng đọc báo lớn ở Việt Nam. VN Express và Dân Chí là hai nền tảng đọc báo lớn ở Việt Nam. VN Express và Dân Chí là hai nền tảng đọc báo lớn ở Việt Nam. Another news website for teenagers, which is Kênh 14. Kênh 14 has been published for around 10 years, I believe, because I remember that when uh, internet was first popular in Vietnam, 
Uh, it was over 10 years ago when I was in high school or university something. Gang in Vietnamese means uh, channel and uh, 14 means 14. So channel 14, channel 4 teens, uh, for teenagers. So that's why Gang Mười focuses on uh, news about celebrities, showbiz, or news that teenagers are interested, such as uh, cooking, gaming, or traveling. But also there will be a lot of scandals here that uh, young people care about. Nowadays, since people don't really read news, so on Gang Mười Bốn, there are articles with a lot of pictures so that people just need to scan. So in Vietnamese, we can say kênh 14 là một tờ báo điện tử rất được các bạn trẻ yêu thích. Kênh 14 là một tờ báo điện tử rất được các bạn trẻ yêu thích. Kênh 14 là một tờ báo điện tử rất được các bạn trẻ yêu thích. Now let's talk about online shopping, which is also my favorite. Among a lot of marketplace websites, I have to say that Tiki, Lazada, and Shopee are the biggest. I think the biggest one is Shopee, and Shopee is quite popular in Asia. So we have Shopee Vietnam, Shopee Philippines, Shopee Malaysia, China, Singapore. I literally online shop on Shopee almost every week. And a lot of things in my house are from Shopee. The second one, I'm not sure which one, but I think it's either Tiki or Lazada. For me, Tiki used to be very popular, even more popular than Shopee, but the price is a little bit higher. While Shopee focuses on like very low affordable prices, so they must have like different markets. But beside from that, Lazada is like a kind of in the middle between Shopee and Tiki. Nowadays, all of them are very popular. But uh, if you ask uh, something that most Vietnamese people know, I believe that must be Shopee. So in Vietnamese, we can say Nếu bạn thích shopping online, bạn có thể thử Shopee, Tiki hoặc Lazada. Nếu bạn thích shopping online, bạn có thể thử Shopee, Tiki hoặc Lazada. Nếu bạn thích shopping online, bạn có thể thử Shopee, Tiki hoặc Lazada. Alright, next one, let's talk about Messenger. Zalo is a made in Vietnam application. They have an application version and also they have a website version. So if you use your laptop or computer, you can use Zalo web version. And this is the most popular and the biggest uh, social media that Vietnamese people use aside from Facebook, okay? Facebook is a little bit more international and Zalo is like specifically designed for Vietnamese people. I remember that when Zalo first launched, um, only middle-aged people care about it because it looks pretty traditional, you know what I mean? But time to time, they have built their own reputation and they really do researches uh, from Vietnamese customers' behaviors. So that's why all of their um, upgrades or updates are pretty suitable for a Vietnamese culture. Now they have calls, free calls, uh, free messages. They also have like a social media such as the new feed of Facebook. And uh, they also have marketplace. What else? They also have like a lot of information. And uh, I think it's pretty similar to WeChat in China. Also, we have Zalo Pay. We can pay uh, through Zalo and uh, a lot of other things. So in Vietnamese, we can say Zalo là một nền tảng mạng xã hội của người Việt. Zalo là một nền tảng mạng xã hội của người Việt. Zalo là một nền tảng mạng xã hội của người Việt. Nền tảng is a platform. A mạng xã hội is social media của người Việt of Vietnamese people. So it's like Zalo is a Vietnamese uh, social media platform. Now, last one, let's talk about documentary platforms or websites. Uh, one of the most viewed uh, documentary websites is uh, Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is pretty popular and a lot of Vietnamese people use it to search for uh, official information. And also we can contribute to the websites as well. Also, if something appears on Wikipedia, that means it's um, qualified and certified. Now in Vietnamese, we can say Wikipedia là một nền tảng rất có uy tín để tìm kiếm thông tin. 
Wikipedia là một nền tảng rất có uy tín để tìm kiếm thông tin. Wikipedia là một nền tảng rất có uy tín để tìm kiếm thông tin. All right, last one, let's talk about a learning website which is vietjack.com. Vietjack.com is basically a platform where they uh, upload a lot of materials, learning materials. Uh, all the materials are categorized by levels, subjects, and you basically can find like all the test samples, uh, exercises about maths, literature, English, uh, physics, chemistries, or other things. It is very popular for elementary, secondary, and high school students. And it's pretty helpful for students, especially when it comes to exams, because they can find a lot of test samples so that they can practice at home. Also, they provide um, responses as well so that we can easily check afterward. In Vietnamese, we can say Vietjet là một nền tảng cung cấp rất nhiều tài liệu học tập cho học sinh. Vietjet là một nền tảng cung cấp rất nhiều tài liệu học tập cho học sinh. Vietjet là một nền tảng cung cấp rất nhiều tài liệu học tập cho học sinh. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please don't forget to like this video here, subscribe here, and uh, visit VietnamesePod101.com for your free lifetime account right now and get your real lessons by real teachers. Thank you so much again, guys. Uh, see you in the next one. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại các bạn. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is, can busy people actually learn a language? You yourself probably have an answer to this question, right? But whether you can or can't actually has a bit more to do with your mindset than anything else. And in this guide, you'll discover, one, is it possible for busy people to learn a language and the mindset needed? Two, mental bandwidth, the one thing that can make or break your language goals. And three, five mindset tricks to make time for language. But first, if you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Talking Online PDF Cheat Sheet. Learn the must-know internet slang and all the internet-related vocab and phrases in your target language with this PDF Cheat Sheet. And second, the 40 words and phrases for ordering food writing workbook. With this free resource, you'll pick up must-know words and phrases for the restaurant and practice writing them out as well. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Can busy people actually learn a language? Part one, is it possible for busy people to learn a language and the mindset needed? So, can busy people actually learn a language? What do you think? Leave us a comment and let us know. As much as we want to say yes, it's more of a yes or no depending on the person. Why yes? Yes, because many of our members are busy and are learning with our system. And some of you who are watching also fall into this camp. But it also depends on the person because it's more of a mindset thing. Either you think you have time or you don't. For example, many of our members fall into the group of can learn and can find the time, even if they're busy. If you're busy and still want to learn, if you look around, you can always find five or 10 minutes a day, like on a commute. Now, if your mindset is the opposite, if you think you can't learn a language or you don't have time, you won't even try, even if you had a resource that was proven to work. Part two, mental bandwidth the one thing that can make or break your language goals. 
And if you think about it, if you had all the time in the world but felt like you couldn't learn a language, you wouldn't try either. Again, this is why it comes down to the mindset and why it all depends on each individual person. Either you think you can or you think you can't. But it may not always be this black and white either. It can also depend on your mental bandwidth too. Think back to your school days, those few days before exams. It got really busy and you had to stop everything to study, right? You were probably thinking, if I can just get through studying this week and take the test, then next week I can finally start relaxing and doing other things. And if someone asked you if you wanted to hang out, you would say no, because you're busy. But chances are you still managed to spend at least 30 minutes on YouTube or social media. Meaning you did have some time, even if you were busy. But the test was occupying your mind and taking up all that bandwidth. So it's also possible that we just don't have the mental bandwidth because we're overwhelmed. And this is a genuine reason for not being able to learn when you're busy. Don't worry, in the next part, we'll show you how to get some bandwidth so that you don't feel overwhelmed. Part three, five mindset tricks to make time for language. So if you've gotten this far, you understand that it is possible to start learning a language, even if you're busy, that you can find the time, but it mostly comes down to your mindset. So how can you develop the mindset? So when you're too busy, it feels like you're overwhelmed and like you don't have control of your time. Well, there are a few things you can do to gain some control of your time, have some breathing room and learn a bit of language. First, always set small, measurable goals. This is something that we talk a lot about here. For example, learn for 10, 15, or 20 minutes every day. Learn 100 words in one month, which means learning three to four words a day. And the mindset behind this is just being realistic with your goals and what you can do. Because if you're busy, you may not have one or two hours. And this is a strict rule, especially when starting out with new goals and languages. Always stick to small, measurable goals. Second, lowering your goals and expectations is okay when things get super busy. If you couldn't learn all 100 words for the month and only got up to 40 or 60, that's okay. If you tried learning on Monday and Tuesday but skipped Wednesday and Thursday, that's okay. Sometimes you have to shift priorities, and prioritizing things is a secret to a successful life. You may not get to the goal you wanted to achieve today, but you can get to it next week. Third, it's okay to put language on pause if life gets in the way. Just like with that last point, you can always come back and reach your goal a little later. We often see learners put language on pause, come back later. Some even come back years later, but the key is to come back. Fourth, avoid the all or nothing mindset at all costs. And an all or nothing mindset is something you'll see in beginners and perfectionists. When you have this mindset, you'll say, language learning requires hours, so there's no point in learning for a few minutes today. But something is better than nothing, and even five to 10 minutes of review adds up in the grand scheme. And in the grand scheme, it's more important to be consistent, even if it's just for a minute a day, rather than study for hours once a week. The brain just doesn't work that way. Fifth, do you have a slowdown or relaxing routine that you do on the weekends or whenever you have free time? And if you didn't do it, you'd feel overwhelmed? Leave us a comment and let us know what it is. For some, it could be reading, watching TV, or going to a cafe and doing nothing for a bit. You're there on your own, you don't have much to do in front of you, even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes. And if you're settled, you start feeling in control. And that's the point you have some mental bandwidth. You can start doing some time management and plan your week out. You can put in a few minutes of language learning. But if you don't slow down and if you feel overwhelmed, you could have the easiest possible way to learn a language. And you still wouldn't do it. So back to you. If you were busy, do you think you'd be able to learn a language? Leave us a comment. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Do you record yourself speaking your target language? If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week.
And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. You say you want to learn and speak the language, but you never quite make the time for it. Well, what if we told you there's an easy way to make time and turn language learning into a habit without carving out time, rearranging your schedule, or changing your life? How to use habit stacking to learn and create a simple learning routine. Stick around. In today's guide, you'll discover one, how to use habit stacking to create a learning routine two, how to learn language while you're on the go, three, how to boost your vocabulary in under a minute a day, and four, how to learn while relaxing, plus more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. What's habit stacking? Habit stacking is an easy way to create new habits by stacking a new habit that you want to have on top of an existing habit that you already have. Why do this? Well, new habits are hard to stick with, but your existing ones are already built into your brain. So by stacking or combining an existing habit with a new one, you're much more likely to stick with it. For example, if you commute to work or school in the morning, use that time to learn the language. Listen to an audio lesson of ours. So here's what else you can do with our learning system. <laughs> Download the Innovative Language Learning app for the iPhone or Android, and you can play our audio and video lessons, absorb practical conversations, pick up new words, phrases, and grammar rules, all during your commute. By the way, you can also apply this tactic to any other routine where it makes sense, like on a walk or while grocery shopping. Do you tend to check your email at a certain time of the day? If so, you can also pick up new words in your target language with our Word of the Day emails. With the Word of the Day, you get new words, translations, and sample sentences, all delivered to your inbox. And all of this takes just a minute or less. This service is free for anyone who has an account with us. If you tend to wind down in the evening with TV or podcasts, you can use that time to learn some language as well. Just turn on our lessons and play them in the background. Or you can play our vocabulary slideshows and passively review vocabulary in the same way. You can access vocabulary slideshows for free inside our vocabulary lists. By the way, if you've noticed, all of these suggestions include one, your existing habit like commuting, taking a walk, checking email, or relaxing in the evening, and two, your desired habit, learning a language. So if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you're learning a language, the words and phrases that will come easiest to you will always be the ones you're interested in. Whether it's words with bad or funny meanings or phrases about yourself, such as where you're from or how old you are. So what if you could make your own printable vocabulary worksheets so you could review and practice writing out the words that you're interested in? How to create your own printable vocabulary worksheets. Well, stick around. In today's guide, you'll discover one, how to assemble your own word and phrase lists, two, how to create your own printable worksheets, and much more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. While you're learning the language, you should keep in mind what exactly you want from this language. Do you want to talk about yourself, your hobbies, or understand TV or music? Why? Because you'll naturally learn faster if you're learning about what you're interested in. So here's how you can assemble your own personal vocab lists. One, as you go through our lessons on the pathway, you'll likely come across words and phrases you want to remember. You could write them down, or you can send them to the Word Bank, which is a premium feature where you can store words and phrases for later review. So look for the Add to Word Bank button on the lesson page. 
too. You can also save words and phrases from our free vocabulary list to the word bank as well. You can sort through hundreds of vocabulary lists by topics such as weather, hobbies, talking about your day, and more. So you can find words that you're interested in. And then click on Add All to Word Bank. Here's how you can make your own worksheets. Just go to the vocabulary menu and select Word Bank. There, you'll see your collection of words and phrases. Just click on Printer-Friendly Version to print them out. You can also click Export Word Bank. If you've organized and labeled your words into categories, such as verbs and adjectives, you can select that label and export it as a PDF. Then, go ahead and print the file out. You can use this worksheet to review the words or even write on it. So, if you just want ready-made printable worksheets and cheat sheets, then you can always unlock our free Conversation and Vocabulary PDF Cheat Sheets and PDF Writing Worksheets. These resources are free for members of our language learning system. So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.